for the deadlift technique fundamentals, the three Bs. Number one B being bar path. And I, and I would prioritize these in this order. Bar path. So it's got to go from look, looking like something like this, right? And then I'll explain why I've used this example here. So perfectly straight line, in my opinion. It should be a perfectly straight line as a non-negotiable. This perfectly straight line should go ever so slightly back because it should start as close to midfoot as possible and then and then meet at the hip. So for most people, it's going to be ever so slightly back in a perfectly straight line. So uh, as you more kind of say, say bigger guys and more slash more inflexible people may find that their straight line goes ever so goes a little bit more angled back than say more flexible people because they may may have a may have a ugh, they may have a trouble producing force from midfoot and they may actually be you might you might find some people more comfortable having the bar out in front a little bit in terms of achieving that start position. So number two thing would be back position and I'm gonna say back I'm just going to just touch on the back position because that's this is where a lot of people seem to start. They think about keeping the straight back. That's a big error that I that I see that people focusing on. Whereas I think they should prioritize bar path first, optimize the bar path first, and obviously do that with a load that's low injury risk. So you, you build up the tolerance with like building on a perfect bar path. And then, then you look at the, the 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 back. I'm going to say back rigidity and back position. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say how flexed or how extended or how straight you could keep your back. That's up for the up to the individual to decide, depending on their context and their strengths and muscle balances. Blah 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 blah. But I'm going to say I'm going to say back or torso rigidity. And what I mean by that is. The position that you start in when the when the bar's a millimeter off the floor should ideally be pretty much the same as the position it is when it when it's locked out. I.e., shouldn't be changing as the as uh, as you as you take load or as the load increases, say as you get heavier or as fatigue sets in. In an ideal world, number three of the fundamentals are the big. What, what do I say? The the, the what are they? The big three Bs. The three Bs. That's it. The three Bs will be bracing. And once you've got the bar, path, and the, and I want to stress this order. This is my philosophy, and I'm trying to put it into something that's me memorable. I'm going to say the bar path first. I'm going to say the the back rigid, rigidity second, and then the bracing as the kind of the icing on the cake. When you once you've got the first two things nailed. Then we're looking to maximize the force force production on and layer the force production and the global force production on top of those first two things. Whereas I think a massive error is that people learn how to brace on top of shit technique. Like you see it, see it so often that when people are queuing, bracing, bracing, and you think, hang on a minute, like you get you your techniques all over the place. You but as soon as you initiate the pull, the bar's going out in front, you're getting pulled over the bar. You you start in pretty straight and then you back round in excessively as you as you start the pull and you're getting told to break <coughs> as the remedy to fix this. Whereas actually, if you learn how to like, oh, oh, I'm almost like I've talked about it before and like overhead stuff and that. But like when, when you're learning a new skill, I'm almost like I, I'm almost like anti brace and I teach people I try and teach people how to optimize positioning without relying on force production to kind of because it can like if you just produce a lot of force it's like people when people say oh my the the, the back's hurting because it's a positional thing and then they'll go go and put the belt on and then the back will be fine because realistically what they're doing is they're enhancing the brace that's actually masking this error enough to not be in pain or discomfort whereas actually if you if you if you kind of like f f find out how to iron out that kind of positional thing with a really low load and then scale it up, get this bar path nailed, get the, 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 find the position that you can maintain a constant back <laughs> throughout. 
and then you layer the bracing on top as the icing on the cake, then I think uh, you'll have a lot more success. What do you think about the three Bs, Shane? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Can't really argue much. So, no, it's 